Hi students, today we are going to learn about scratch pad memory. The last class itself I have told we have learned about best organization. That time itself I have told that there is an alternative method for accessing these registers. That particular concept is called the scratch pad memory. So the registers in a processor unit can be enclosed within a small memory unit. So these registers can be grouped and then can be enclosed in a small memory unit. When included in a processor unit, a small memory is sometimes called scratch pad memory. So if you are including a memory unit in a processor unit, then that it is called a, that particular memory is called a scratch pad memory. Then now we will see why we are preferring or what is the advantage of this scratch pad memory when compared to the buses. One is that use of a small memory is a cheaper alternative to connect bus processors uh, registers through a bus system. So one is that it is cheaper when compared to the bus system. Second is the difference between the two systems is the manner in which information is selected for transfer into the ALU. So the difference between the two systems lies in the way in which the informations are selected and passed to the ALU. In a bus system, the information transfer is selected by a MUX that form the buses. We have already seen in our last class that uh, in, in our example, we used two MUXs and the MUXs were used to select the input data to A bus and B bus. In a scratch pad memory, a single register is in a group of registers. Organized as a small memory must be selected by means of an address to the memory unit. Whereas in the case of scratch pad memory, we have so many registers and these registers are enclosed in as a memory unit. If you want to access a particular register from the memory unit, we can use the concept of addresses. So by specifying the addresses, we are accessing that particular register. Now we are going to see what is the difference between a main memory and a scratch pad memory. So the main memory, the function is to store instructions and data. Whereas uh, scratch pad memory, it is an alternative to connect a number of processor registers through a common transfer path. So it is uh, scratch pad memory means to store a lot of registers. That's purpose. The information stored in scratch pad memory would come from main memory by means of instructions in the program. So whatever uh, data are stored in the scratch pad memory is coming from the main memory through the instructions in the program. Now we are going to see how a scratch pad memory work. This is a diagram showing a processor unit employing a scratch pad memory. So a source register is selected from memory and is loaded into register A. So you can see that a source register is selected and is loaded into register A. A second source register is selected from memory and it is loaded into register B. So a second source register is selected from memory and is loaded into register B. You can see here. The selection is done by specifying the word address and activating the memory read input. So the selection is done from the memory is done with the help of the address. So the address will select a particular word from the memory and at the same time the read input should be in enabled form. Then only that particular content can be read from the memory. The information in A and B is manipulated in the ALU and shifter. So we have an ALU and a shifter likewise in best organization. So the information coming from A register and B register will be manipulated by the ALU and the shifter. In ALU, all the operations will be performed uh, based upon the function select and shifter, it performs shift if it is necessary. Otherwise, without any shift, it will give the uh, data to the output bus. The result of operation is transferred to a memory register by specifying its word address and activating the memory write input control. So the result again goes to a multiplexer and then goes to a scratch pad memory. So based upon 
the address that is specified it will be returned into the scratch pad memory that time the right signal should be enabled marks in the input of memory can select input data from an external source so there is a provision you can see here there is an arrow indicating input data so this particular uh, measure is taken in order to read data from an external source now we are going to see an example for the uh, to show the working of the scratch pad memory assume that the memory has eight words we are using a memory that consisting of eight words so that an address must be specified with three bits you know that the memory combination is 2 raised to 3 is equal to 8 so an address must be specified with three bits so to perform the operation same operation that we have learned in bus organization that is r1 replacement r2 plus r3 what are the controls that is provided first one is that at time interval or control function t1 a will be loaded with memory of 010 so 010 is the address that is specified here m stands for the memory so it is read r2 into register a r2 will be loaded into register a then control function t2 implies b replacement m of 011 that is read r3 into register b so r3 will be loaded into register b then here each and every register is different the destination register is another register so it contains another address so that is t3 m of 001 that is 001 means it is the address of r1 if we into that particular address the content of a and b are added and the result is stored in this particular word so it performs the operation in alu and transfer the result to r1 the simple m of x x x we have seen that uh, on the example m of 001 m of 010 etc so it designates a memory word or register specified by the address given in the binary number x x x so whatever address this is provided it is specified this indication specifies a particular memory word or a register the reasons for a sequence of three micro operations instead of just one as in bus organized processor is due to the limitation of the memory unit. So here we need three micro operation to be carried out. Whereas in the case of bus organization, it was completed in one micro operation because of some limitations of the memory unit. Because the memory unit has only one set of address terminal. You can see from the figure that was uh, shown and explained above there was only one address terminal was there so each and every time an address is specified we need uh, to have only one micro operation at a time so we were having two accesses that is to read we were uh, we need to read uh, uh, r3 and r2 so that is the two read operations and then one the destination register was r1 so the result has to be stored in r1 so it is the third one so since there is only one address terminal so these three operations i mean it uh, that is the limitation of the memory unit suppose uh, the destination register was same as one of the source registers then automatically it would have completed in two operations so that is the limitation of a scratch pad memory next we are going to deal about two port memory so actually this two port memory was developed in order to uh, have this disadvantage of scratch pad memory to be removed or to be sought out that is why this uh, two port memory concept was introduced so some processors employ a two port memory in order to overcome the delay caused when reading two or more source registers so we have seen that in the case of scratch pad memory while reading two or more source registers it requires two operations or time of two operations so to overcome that difficulty we have come with the two port memory it has two separate address lines to select two words of memory simultaneously so it has two and ad separate address lines. so uh, in the previous example r3 and r2 would have been loaded at the same time 
in this way the two source registers can be read at the same time so this figure shows a processor with a two port memory as i have told there are two address line a address and b address so that two source registers can be loaded at the same time if the destination register is same as one of the source registers the entire micro operation can be done within one clock pulse period so we have also already discussed this in the case of scratch pad memory if the destination register is same as one of the source register there it could have taken two micro operations or two clock pulse here if the destination register is same as one of the source registers it can be completed in one clock pulse period the memory has two sets of addresses one for port a and one for port b we have a address and we have b address data from any word in memory are read to the a register by specifying the a address and similarly b register by specifying the b address so by specifying the a address we are getting the data into register a and specifying the b address we are getting the data into register b when enabled by memory enable input new data can be written into the word specified by the b address because here b is is the destination register also so when this memory enable line is active then new word can be written into destination register b so here a comma b addresses are the source registers so this a address and b addresses are the source register and b address is the destination register we are storing the result back in b itself a and b registers are latches that accept new information as long as clock pulse cp is in one state you can see here there is a clock pulse so cp stands for clock pulse so this a and b registers are actually latches latches means as long as this clock pulse is in one state or positive state it is latches will accept the information when the clock pulse goes to zero latches are disabled it retains the information when cp is equal to 1 so when this cp goes in the low state or becomes zero the information that was already present in registers a and b when cp was equal to 1 that information will be retained by a and b the clock input controls the memory read and write operations through the write enable input so this uh, you can see here we we stands for write enable so it uh, controls the clock input controls the memory read and write operations by this thing that is the write enable input it also controls the transfers into a and b latches similarly depending upon we only uh, it controls or we controls the transfer of information to a and b registers or a and b latches the waveform of one clock pulse interval is shown in the figure so it uh, this indicates a one clock pulse uh, figure is or uh, one clock pulse interval is shown in the figure when clock input is equal to 1 a and b latches are open and accept information from the memory so when this clock pulse or is equal to 1 that means a and b latches are open both a and b and a and b and latches are open and they accept the information from the memory we input also is in one state this input is also in one state this disables the write operation and enables the read operation you can see that is it a low low uh, low degree it is shown that means uh, when the we input is in one state this disables the write operation write operation will not takes place and enables the read operation the c when cp is equal to 1 the words selected by a and b addresses are read from memory and it is placed into a and b registers respectively when the value of the cp is equal to 1 a and b registers will be loaded with data the operation in ale is performed with the data stored in a, a and b so the alu and shifter here it is compared so the alu performs the required operation um with the data from a and b when clock 
input is equal to zero, latches are closed and they retain the last data entered. So this, when this clock input equal to zero means the latches are in closed state and whatever information it was stored in A and B will be retained by A and B. If the ME, that is memory enabled input is enabled while W is equal to zero, the result of the micro operation is returned into the memory word defined by the B address. So if this ME input is enabled at the same time the value of W is zero, the result will be loaded into destination register B. Thus R1 replace one R1 plus R2 can be done within one clock pulse period. Thus the operation that is R1 replacement R1 plus R2 here. The source register and destination registers are same can be done within one clock pulse period. The memory register R1 must be specified with the B address. So B address means it is register R1 and R2 with the A address. R2 is loaded in the A address. So this is how the two port memory works. So today we have learned about scratch pad memory and two port memory. Hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you.